In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to pass the CGRC exam, previously known or formerly known as the CAP exam. So in this video, you're probably going to hear me refer to it as the CAP exam. Um, just know that the exam name and the certification name will change, but the contents of the exam remain the same. All right, check it out. To successfully pass the CAP exam, there's some key things you need to know. Know your authorization decisions. So know that you could get an ATO, authority to operate, or a DATO, denial of authority to operate. Know your assessment methods. Uh, quick tip is that it's the acronym is TIE, T-I-E, so you're testing, you're interviewing, and you're examining. Those are the assessment methods. Know your security control classes. So know that the acronym here is MOT, Management, Controls, Operation, Controls, and Technical Controls. Know this key point that there are two requirements for a security assessor or a security control assessor, independence and technical confidence. Know that there are three ways to measure security control effectiveness. Number one is, is it implemented correctly? Is it operating as intended for two? Three, is it producing the desired results or to be more specific, specific we say outcome, okay? Is it implemented correctly, operating as intended, or is it producing the desired outcomes? Authorization. Know that for authorization, Um, the only person who could authorize and accept risk of a system is the AO, the authorizing official. Know that the security authorization package consists of the POAMs, the SSP, and SAR. know what the SSP is. It's an overview of security requirements, description of agreed upon security controls and other support and security related documents. Know that the SAR is the security assessment results and recommended corrective actions for control weakness or deficiencies. Your POAMs measures plan to correct weakness or deficiencies and to reduce or eliminate known vulnerabilities. Authorization for cloud systems. Know that it is done by FedRAMP. FedRAMP is where you do your, um, where the agency that deals with um, cloud information systems or cloud service provider or cloud services authorizations. Know that your impact levels are low, moderate, and high. Low is the key word here when you see the definition um, coming in form of a question. If you see a question that says, what is a low um, impact level if you see limited effect in, in the description no it's talking about low if you see serious adverse effect no it's moderate if you see catastrophic or severe adverse effect no it's high and then uh, the next thing is to know your your rmf phases 
So remember the phases of the RMF, the prepare phase, followed by the categorize phase, the select phase, implement phase, assess phase, authorize phase, and monitor. So when you monitor, you're pretty much going back to the whole process again. Frame and risk. Know that uh, to frame risk, you frame, assess, respond, monitor. Also know, known as farm. So this this exam is based on NIST 800-37, but there are also some supplemental reading suggestions that um, ISC squared has suggested for the exam. So there are other NIST publications that you should be familiar with before you take the exam. And some of the questions will come from those um, publications. So here is the exam, the CAP exam outline. And on the bottom page, or last page, it says ex additional exam information, supplementary um, references. So if you click on this site here, it gives you the other um, supplemental um, documents to, to read. So we've clicked on the link and it brings us to this ISC squared page, CBK, um, Common Body of Knowledge Suggested References. So if we scroll down to CAP, these are the different exams that and certifications that ISC squared uh, holds. So this is for the CAP, which we're concerned with. These are the materials that they suggest we, we read before taking the CAP exam. So we've got the CAP CBK um, book. We've got NIST 800-37 RIF 2, NIST 800-53 RIF 4, NIST um, special publication 800-30 NIST special publication 800-39 FIPS 199 which is a NIST document um, 800-60 volume 1 Rev 1 NIST 800-37 137 NIST 800-18, SSPs, NIST 800-70, NIST 815, NIST Special Publication 800-31, FIPS 199, FIPS 199. So let's click on this link here, see what the book looks like. So here is the book. Kindle version is 55 bucks and some change. Hard copy 60 and 89 and 87 cents. This book is a great book to have and a great resource. However, um, if you don't have 60 bucks to shell out, you could download the NIST 800-37 and the other supplemental uh, documents that they uh, requested or suggested that will um, suffice for the book. But why I would advise you to get this book is 
that everything is concise into the book. It also has practice questions and example uh, documents uh, at the back. All in all, it's a good book to read. And so this is a good book to have. Again, however, if you're trying to take the exam, uh, this will not be the best book for you because it is outdated. It's got um, the old uh, NIST risk management framework with the six phases as opposed to the seven. I believe it was... Um, published what, what 2008 or something or I'm sorry maybe 2016 2015 or something so it's it's old um, but it, it's still a good resource to have on the job because it still has some definitions it's got sample forms at the back again um, sample SSP sample um, executive summary and things of that nature but if you're trying to go for the exam do not i repeat do not um, focus on this book to pass the the new exam get nis 800-37 rev 2 and the supplemental documents on the back